Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. The WB Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute Martinsburg Clinics have moved to a new location. Our RNI team has moved to a larger custom design suite on the third floor of the Spring Mills Medical Office Building at 61 Campus Drive. RNI teams now located in the new Spring Mills office include physical medicine and rehabilitation, neurosurgery, and neurology. We look forward to welcoming patients at this new location in Spring Mills. For more info, call 304-596-5038. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II basketball featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's game is sponsored by Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Rocks, the Dutch Miller Auto Group, the Mirius Group of Financial Advisors, the Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Brown's Funeral Homes and Cremations, CMA Honda, Craig Blair for State Senate, Orsini's Home Store, the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm, the Berkeley County Health Department, Hagerstown Ford, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Modern Realty Results, the Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine. Now let's send it out to the Butcher Athletic Center on the campus of Shepherd University and join our TV10 broadcast crew for the game. Welcome into the Butcher Center here on the campus of Shepherd University here in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Getting you ready for Shepherd Rams basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. In a men's and women's doubleheader between the Shepherd Rams and the Westchester University Golden Rams. Dylan Bishop and Colin McLaughlin with you for TV10, WRNR TV on YouTube, Nick Verzellini back in the studio, John Alderton, our cameraman this evening. And we start things out with the women. The Lady Rams so far this year for Shepard on the season are six and fourteen, which you know to the to the outside observer may not sound like much. They're four and they're four and eleven in the PSAC, but it's much improved from last year. And they've gotten themselves onto a pretty good winning track, winning three of their last four games with a 10-point win against Bloomsburg, an 11-point win against Shippensburg, and a two-point road victory against East Stroudsburg in three of their last four games with a loss to Kutztown in between Shippensburg and East Stroudsburg. But we're at the point right now, Colin, where the Lady Rams – have seen very, very genuine progress from last year and really from the beginning of the year where they went on a pretty solid losing streak of eight games in a row. And now they've won three of their last four, including in the last game, two-point win over East Stroudsburg, came on a last-second shot made by Kara Werner, the freshman point guard. So they have found something with Werner, some of their younger players, Moving Carmea Bowman into the starting lineup. 
as the season has gone on, has led to some extra success. This team is starting to find their way, Colin. Yes, they are. It's fun to see through this young team, the shrines that they've been able to take in this rebuild process that began last year at a, after all the success they had the years prior to that. And you mentioned the record overall at 6-14, and 14, conference record of 4 and 11 and in the east that's not too far out of a playoff spot right now only behind east stroudsburg in that final six spot who's five and ten you did just beat them so that helps you out a little bit as well for the rest of the season and even though you don't really look at tonight as a winnable game going up against westchester the second best team in the PSAC east coming off a win against Lock Haven, giving Lock Haven the first East Division loss, first conference loss even for them as well. But looking down the rest of the schedule for Shepard, they do have some winnable games, and we could see them potentially find their way into the uh, conference playoffs at the end of the year. They could. You look down, like you said, Bloomsburg and Shippensburg, away games against two teams that they just beat. A game here at the Butcher Center on February 17th against Lock Haven. Like you mentioned, the number one team in the PSAC East with a record of 14-1, and an overall record of 19-2. and But part of the improvement is Shepard is margin of victory against some of the better teams, even if they aren't getting wins. On January 20th, they went to Lock Haven, and they only lost by four points. 58 to 4 to 54 and if they can you know recreate that success you would imagine that they could potentially pull off an upset in that game against Lock Haven it's a one o'clock game on a Saturday and you could see there, there's always some interesting movement in those Saturday games for away teams sometimes they've played a game just a few days earlier sometimes also an away game so you never know with that travel. A lot of these PSAC teams, we talk about sometimes the struggle of Shepard having to travel a long way to these other PSAC schools. These PSAC schools also have to travel a long way to get down to Shepard. So there's a bit of an advantage there for the Rams that when these schools come to them, they, they have to travel a good bit more than maybe they do some of the other PSAC teams in their own side of the division. So we'll see if potentially they can pull off some upsets there. And like you said, only a game out of sixth place in the PSAC East, which would get you into the PSAC tournament. And they're only a half game more away from fifth place. And then you add in another half game, and that's fourth place. There, Mansfield sits in fourth place in the PSAC East. Only at six and nine, so Shepard's only two games behind them, and Shepard will get another crack at Mansfield in their next game. This upcoming Saturday, they go to Mansfield. Mansfield did beat them 81-63 to in the first matchup here at the Butcher Center. You see if there will be any improvement from a game to game there. You just see that Shepard just beat East Stroudsburg away after losing to them at home by eight points. So... There is always that chance that you can improve from game to game. Yeah, and hopefully they improve in tonight's game compared to the last time they took on Westchester, a game that was a blowout over in the Philadelphia area. Final score of that one was 82 to 27. Not the best game for Shepard trying to improve here tonight at home against this team that is on the verge, at least for one player, of history tonight as well, Dylan. Right, Leah Johnson, only 10 points away from becoming the all-time leading scorer here at or at Westchester, able to potentially make that record happen here tonight at the Butcher Center here at Shepherd. We'll get into Westchester a little more on the other side of this break we'll take a break for two minutes when we come back we'll 
talk a little bit more about the Westchester Golden Rams. This is Shepherd University basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We'll be back in two minutes. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States each year. But do you know the radon levels in your home? Home is a place to live, love, and laugh, not a place to breathe air containing radon. The Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments are distributing free confidential radon test kits, and you can get yours at the Berkeley County Health Department office in Martinsburg and the Morgan County Health Department office in Berkeley Springs. Protect your home and family. Get your free radon test kit today. Welcome back to the Butcher Center here on the campus of Shepherd University. Dylan Bishop and Kyle McLaughlin here for TV10, WRNR TV on YouTube. About 18 minutes away from the start of the women's game here between Shepherd and Westchester. We'll talk a little bit about the Westchester Golden Rams here, sitting currently at second place in the PSAC East at a record of. 11 and 4 in the conference and 16 and 5 overall so far on the season this many of their losses have come to some of the better teams in the PSAC their first loss on the season came out of conference we'll, we'll focus on the four that they've had in the conference which was a four point loss at Mercyhurst Mercyhurst currently tied for third in the West at a record of 10 and 5 in the PSAC an 86 to 71 loss to Gannon Gannon currently sits at 15 and 0 in the PSAC 23 and 1 overall one of the highest scoring offenses in Division 2 in general 54 to 51 loss on January 3rd to Cal U that was an away game there all three of those losses listed so far, all on the road. And then a 79-76 overtime loss to Lockhaven on January 6th. And that was their last loss in general. They've yet to lose since that game. Followed that up with wins at Shepard, or against Shepard, versus East Stroudsburg, at Kutztown, at Shippensburg versus Mansfield, versus Millersville, at Bloomsburg, versus Lockhaven, leading them to today with an eight-game winning streak coming into this one column. Yeah, and you mentioned that most recent win against Lockhaven, team that was ranked 14th in the country in a 58-49 win for Westchester. And as I said earlier in the pregame, that was the first conference loss for not Lockhaven, a team that's 19-2 overall now so only the second loss in the entire season for them too so Westchester definitely a very good opponent tonight Shepard has its hands full it'll be interesting to see how they're able to stop the Golden Rams or maybe not even just stop limit them I guess is maybe a better way to say it because you can't really stop a team that is this good 
Right, 82-27 to 27 was the score when these teams faced off at Westchester. Westchester is the second highest scoring offense in the PSAC at 73.4 points per game. Only behind Gannon when it comes to margin of victory so far this year in the PSAC. Average victory of 18.6 points per game with a 54.8 points per game defense. They are also second in defense. So second in offense and second in defense in the conference. Pretty good, uh, as you think you can say. Pretty safe to say. Seton Hill sits at number one in offense. Gannon sits at number one in defense, both on the west side of the conference. So it comes to in your division, it doesn't get any tougher than this when it comes to scoring offense, scoring defense. Well, Lockhaven obviously has the better record, but these two teams, Westchester and, and Lockhaven, have split their series with each other. Obviously, like we just mentioned, Westchester's last game was a win over Lockhaven, and that loss to Lockhaven earlier in the year was, as we said, an overtime game. So these teams have been very evenly matched. Westchester has two very good scorers, Emily McAteer at 17.5 points per game, and again, seven rebounds a game as well, is fourth in the conference in scoring behind only three players from Gannon, Bloomsburg, and Seton Hill. And you go down, Leah Johnson at 14.8 points per game is also 12th in the conference in scoring. And as we mentioned, is 10 points away from becoming the all-time leading scorer at Westchester. So it's it'll be a tough matchup no matter what. You, know, you can try to stop one of them, and the other one will take over. Leah Johnson also leads the PSAC in assists at 5.8 assists per game, and that's kind of been her calling card the entire time she's been here. Leah Johnson's a fifth-year senior, been here since 2019, was a freshman the same year that Abby Beeman was a freshman here at Shepherd. really was the only player that stopped, the, Abby, I should say, was the only player that probably stopped Leah Johnson from being the PSAC East Freshman of the Year in 2019. May have been the only player that stopped Leah Johnson from being the PSAC East Player of the Year overall in 2022. Well, she's been a longtime leader on this team, led the team in points as a freshman back in 2019 the same way the Beeman did for Shepard so if you uh, Shepard fans out there that remember the Abby Beeman era it wasn't that long ago Leah Johnson is their Abby Beeman and it has shown against the Rams in the competition that they've had against Westchester over the years yeah Dylan you mentioned Johnson you mentioned uh McAteer as well she had 19 points leading the way in that win against Lockhaven on Saturday. I'm going to throw a third one in the mix here and dub the combo the Mac attack. Probably already been called that before for this team, but also watch out for Anna McTamney. She had 14 points in that win against Lockhaven too. So watch out for her as well to lead the way for the Westchester Golden Rams. She averages 9.9 .9 points per game so far this year. The fourth leading scorer on the Westchester Golden Rams is also Michelle Kozicki at 10.8 per game. So this is a very good Westchester team that has a lot of firepower going for it. And obviously it led to a huge 55-point victory for the Golden Rams over the Shepherd Rams the first time that they went against each other earlier this year on January 10th. Let's take a, a two-minute break, and we'll, when we come back, we'll have more pregame as we get closer to Westchester versus Shepard here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We'll be back in two minutes. 
Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Welcome back to the Parsons Four Countdown to Tip-Off here, brought to you by Parsons Ford, 1400 Shepherdstown Road, and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons, Dylan Bishop and Colin McLaughlin, here for TV10, WRNR TV on YouTube. Getting you ready for Westchester and Shepherd. The basketball doubleheader starting off with the women and then going on to the men. Talked about it here. Uh, Colin, if we have your keys to the game, the key to your next car is at the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Dutch Miller Automotive Group. Colin, your keys to the game in this one for Westchester and Shepard. Yeah, you know, start off with Westchester. You got to just go with what you've got working for you so far, and after that, it should be smooth sailing. This team has the experience on paper. Overall, should dominate this game. And the pressure, though, because of potential history for this team, currently on Leah Johnson. As we said, she's. Ten points away from becoming the program's all-time leading scorer. Do you try to get her the ball early to get that out of the way so you can focus on just getting the win the rest of the way? And if that's the case, it's the pressure on her then to knock down those shots because if you go cold trying to get the ball to her early, does that potentially keep Shepard in it or not? For Shepard, on their end, got to be able to rebound well against this team. And then at the same time also limit the turnovers here against Westchester as well. And that 82-27 loss earlier this year, Shepard really struggled when it came to turnovers, trying to pull up here for you the exact number of how many turnovers Shepard had in that game. And... For some reason, it's not pulling up on my phone right now, so let me switch over here to a different side of things. But it was a lot, well, and that's the issue. I believe it was over 20. Yeah, that, that, that's been a problem. It was more so the big problem for last year's team. Yeah, here we go, 27. That's what I thought it was, but I also got confused because that's how many they scored, and I didn't put two and two together that they turned the ball over as many times as they had points. Never ideal. You, no, you, it's not. You usually want more points than turnovers. But 
All that being said, turnovers this year for Shepard have been less of an issue than they were last year. It's part of the improvement that the team has seen with some some more confident guard play coming in with the with the likes of Kara Werner, Layla Copeland, even Deara Harrison, the Martinsburg product, has shown some good stuff at guard. But it's mainly been Copeland and, and Werner that have really carried the load at point guard that have been able to sort of be that steady hand with the ball, be the ball handler, be that legit true point guard because last year a lot of the times it was you Peyton Grant or maybe you were having Sidney Bowles bring the ball up the court who was more of a wing a three or a four rather than a one but she can run the floor she can get her own rebound and bring the ball up that way but that's something you just want to do kind of sparingly but now they have Copeland now they have Werner you can really have as that stabilizing force so that you don't quite always have as many turnovers compared to what you had last year. And, but there's still, that being said, it's still a very young, inexperienced team, has their moments, their lapses, especially against better teams. Again, this team in Westchester is one of the best in the PSAC. So it's still going to have their moments. Also, Jordan Carr has played a lot more this year than she did last year. She had some injury issues last year. And even, I think, missed a game game or two this year with an injury. But for the most part, has been healthy. Uh, Jordan Carr out of Jefferson High School, another local product, has been another good guard for them. Has been able to be a ball handler. This team still lacks a bit of size. Now... Coach Kaufman did go and has switched Carmea Bowman to the starting lineup, which has, I think, helped out a little bit. Bowman's now started seven games out of the 20 that they've played so far this year, which is coming off the bench as a freshman, you know, 5'10 freshman from Hampstead, Maryland, out of Manchester Valley High School. Has been someone that can, you know, get you some rebounds, be that actual true center down low, score some points in the paint when she gets a pass to her. So you hope that that's something that can continue for the Rams. Kind of mentioned in our first broadcast that Bowman had sort of that prototype of a Sidney Clayton that you would hope that she can grow into that sort of player. Now, obviously, as a freshman, she's not going to be at that point being as polished as a Clayton, and, you know, you can't really have that sort of expectation. Sidney Clayton's one of the top five leading scorers, I believe even second second or third all-time scorer in the school's history. She was, you know, uh, a great scorer right off the bat uh, from being a freshman, but you hope that she can grow into some version of that player that can score down low, get your rebounds, play defense, because that's the kind of player that this team's needed. Yes, it is, and I agree with you. Hopefully we'll see that here in the near future for this team. We'll get into our starting lineups here soon. Westchester has yet to reveal their starting lineup. We have a, a projected starting lineup for Shepard coming up in this one. But until then... Colin, we still have a couple minutes left before we'll take one last break. Colin, it's, uh, what's one or two things that you're really looking forward to in this first game, and really just for the night overall, because we have the men's game coming up right after this? So, first, I'm looking forward to a well-attended crowd here. I see good crowd so far here for the women's game, and that's because today is... National Girls and Women's in Sports Day. So all the women's athletic programs here at Shepherd University, members of those respected programs in attendance here for tonight's game. I believe I see uh, Faith Christian Academy's girls basketball team here as well down below us. And on the opposite side of the court, some local royalty in girls and women's basketball. Vicki Bullitt 
in attendance as well as her either travel team, AAU team, or high school team. I'm not too sure, but they're behind the score table there in attendance. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And overall, just a great game here between Westchester and Shepard, the headbutting bowl. Right, you've seen a lot of support out here tonight for the women's team in this one that they're about to have. You see, you know, the the softball team, cheerleaders, lacrosse, volleyball. They're all they're all here tonight. The to see the Shepherd Rams take on the Westchester Golden Rams. So let's take one last three minute break. When we come back, we'll get you ready for tip off. This is Shepherd Basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above market trade in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. At Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Look and feel your best this year. WV Medicine Plastic, Cosmetic, and Reconstructive Surgery Martinsburg offers a variety of procedures to enhance your appearance. Board certified by the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, Dr. Jack Gelman specializes in tummy tucks, breast augmentation and lifts, liposuction, body contouring, arm and thigh lifts, Botox, and filler injections. WV Medicine Plastic, Cosmetic, and Reconstructive Surgery. Financing options are available. Call 304-350-3274. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body.
Welcome back to the Butcher Center here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. After the playing of our national anthem and playing of Lift Every Voice and Sing for Black History Month. We'll get some final introductions here as the starting lineups are announced for both sides here, starting with the Westchester Golden Rams. Starting lineups here brought to you by the Marius Group, Mayor Prize Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg or give them a call at 304 263 43 4-3 for the Westchester Golden Rams. Their starting lineup is number three. Number three, Leah Johnson. Number 10, Michelle Kosicki. Number 20, Emily McAteer. Number 22, Morgan Worley. And number 32, Anna McTamney. And for the Shepherd Rams, starting lineup is number five, Peyton Grant. Number 11, Kara Werner. Number 23, Kara Miner. Number 24, Carmea Bowman. And number 33, Sydney Bowles. Starting lineup brought to you by the Marius Group, Mayor Prize Financial Advisors. Sylvan Bishop and Colin McLaughlin here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Getting ready for opening tip off. Here, brought to you by the Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. Colin, ready for tip-off here between the Rams and the Golden Rams. Yep, I'm looking forward to this one. A doubleheader for women's and men's basketball. Men's game will follow here as both teams just finally huddle up with one another, get ready, and here we go. Four 10 minute quarters here. First quarter, TV 10 is brought to you by the Brown Funeral Homes and Cremations, Robert Fields and Sons. Family owned full service funeral home in Martinsburg, Inwood, and Charlestown, Ranson. Proudly serving our area since 1880. The opening tip will be taken between Sydney Bowles and Michelle Kosicki. And the tip goes the way. Of the Golden Rams, of Westchester goes into the hands of Leah Johnson. Again, who only needs 10 points to become the school's all-time leading scorer. The ball's in her hands now. She'll drive in. Ends up picking up her dribble, bouncing it out to McTamney. Takes a three, no good. Ball ends up on the ground. She saves it over her back. Gets it to Kaziki, who throws up a wild shot and draws the foul against Kara Miner. A great job by McTamney there to save that one and get the offensive rebound. Looks like, though, she might have hurt herself in the process a little bit. Already had a sleeve on that left leg of hers and kind of holding it now and readjusting it. First shot from Kotsiki is good. Makes it one to nothing. 9.36 left in the first quarter. And now two for two goes Kosicki. Two nothing Golden Rams, and they'll bring the pressure full court right away against Shepard. Werner is able to get it across half court. Gives it up to Bowman, who's trapped near the sideline. Gets it out to Grant, barely gets it, then gets it to Minor. Mid range jumper, no good. Ball tipped around, eventually rebounded by Johnson. Leah Johnson looks to the bench for the play. And the Golden Rams will set up. Get it over to Worley. Looking for room. Bounces it to the elbow for McAteer. Brings it out. Guarded by Bowles. Now driving inside is McTamney. Goes to the rim. Too strong, but gets her own rebound. Dishes it out to Johnson, who will try to drive. Pulls up. Also no good. This time Bowles is able to save it, but got it over to Werner, who was stepping out of bounds herself. Yeah, both were going after it. One saw the other, so couldn't really stop in midair, though, unfortunately. 
Inbound out, three-pointer for McAteer. No good, rebounded. And they'll get it right back to her. That one takes a friendly bounce off the Butcher Center rim. And McAteer has two points. The pressure getting to the Rams. Worley almost comes up with a steal. Ends up batting the ball out of bounds. Stays with Shepard, though. The ball's in to Bowman, who throws it way up the court to Grant, and then to Kara Miner, wide open for two. First points up on the board for the Lady Rams go to Kara Miner, the graduate student from Hunter, West Virginia, North Marion High School. Much better offensive possession there for Shepard. That first possession, Miner was wide open in that same exact spot, but was unable to get a basket because of the double team defensively by Westchester. This time they were, and now Westchester responds. It's McAteer on the other end, hook shot, four points for her. They'll break the press here again. Bowman has it, picks up her dribble, finds Werner on the cut. She dishes the ball outside to Miner for three, no good. Long rebound out to McAteer, and here comes Johnson looking for room. Pulls up, double team, no good on the jump shot there. Offensive rebound, though. Back to the Rams. Already, offensive rebounding has been a problem on this end of the floor for Shepard. Get the ball to Johnson in the mid-range. Her shot bounces around and is good. Leah Johnson's first two points of the night make it 8-2. to two. Sydney Bowles gets it across half court. Shepard moving fast to break the press. Finds Peyton Grant in the corner for the three. Peyton Grant, the sharpshooter from downtown, cuts the lead in half from 6-3. to three. Six thirty-six left to go in the first quarter. Here comes Westchester on the other end. Off the screen comes McTamney for three, and she knocks it down. Anna McTamney makes it 11 to five. Here in the first quarter. Miner on the other end with the ball. Werner for three. She responds. The freshman, Kara Werner. Having herself a big year in her first year in college basketball. For the Rams has been clutch when they've needed her. On the other end here, it's Worley, and she's gotten herself stolen by Peyton Grant. And she'll come the other way with the ball. Looking for room. Dribble hand off to Grant. Now they'll work the ball around. Werner again on the other side gets a switch off of the screen. They'll work it to the left corner for Bowles. She mm. can't knock it down. Westchester slowing it down on their end. Johnson uses the screen. Ends up with the ball again. They'll go top of the key for McTamney. Pull up, step back, no good from the mid-range. Here comes Bolds the other way. Dumps it off to Miner, thinks about the three. But then they'll pull out and run the offense. 17 on the shot clock. Hands it off to Grant. Trying to get it inside to Bowman. They do. She kicks it out to Bowles. She drives inside. Looks for space. Can't find it. Has to get it out to Werner. Werner pick and roll. Pulls up from the mid-range. Kara Werner puts in two more. One-point game here with 4.25 left in the quarter. defense here on this end for Shepard too. Very disciplined so far, not allowing much space here for Westchester. McTammy blocked by Miner, but Bowman going for it, kind of stumbles and can't get it in. 
And with 4.08 left to go in the quarter, we'll get a media timeout. So we'll take a 30-second break, and when we come back, we'll have more Shepherd basketball here on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. Coming out of the timeout, it's 11 to 10 Westchester, one point lead over Shepard here. Dylan Bishop and Colin McLaughlin here for TV 10 WRNR TV on YouTube. Nick Verzellini back at the studio. John Alderton behind the camera. Colin, it's only a one point deficit for Shepard right now, but it it could yeah. be going better. Yeah, I mean, if you're Shepard, you'll take this. I mean, only down one right now here, almost six minutes into the first against Westchester, a team on paper that should be dominating you right now isn't but at the same time as you just said yeah if it came down to rebounding and your team was better on the glass so far here at the start Shepard would potentially be finding themselves in the lead so far being out rebound by Westchester eight to one and five of those eight rebounds for Westchester have been offensive rebounds inbound went to McAteer and right back to, to Johnson Johnson with a long three-pointer, doesn't hit it, and it leads to a leak out here. Bowles gets the rebound, quickly gets it out to Grant. Jordan Carr has come in off the bench for the Rams. Carr will drive right baseline, too strong on the layup. Rebound couldn't be got by Annie Hunt, who's also checked in off the bench, and the fast break layup for McTamney is good. It was five points already. Let's see if Shepard can get things going in the half court here. The pass is deflected. We'll get a foul as Leah Johnson almost got off to the most uncontested fast break you can really get. That's the first foul against Kara Werner. Second team foul. And Bowles trying to pick the pocket of McAteer there. Johnson gets into the lane with a floater. That one's no good. Rebounded by, by Werner. Here comes Grant the other way. Gets the car. Trying to get inside, lost the handle a little bit. It's eventually stripped away by McAteer. Johnson will kick it to McTamney. Immediately pull up three, no good. Grant boxes out, but doesn't get the rebound. That goes out to McAteer. And they'll get it into McAteer again against Bowles. Her shot is short. Great defense there by Bowles, and eventually Werner comes up with the rebound. Here comes the fast break. She'll pull up from the free throw line, and she'll sink it. Kara Werner with seven of the 12 points for Shepard so far. Two oh five left in the first quarter. Westchester trying to pull away in a matchup that they won by 55 points the first time around. Leah Johnson gets in the lane. They'll call the foul. Shot almost goes in. Looks like they're going to give her the, the shot or the foul in the act of shooting. So Werner will check out her second foul. That's a tough break for Shepard. Werner leading the way in points. It'll be Cassidy Rhodes that checks in. Johnson will sink her first of two shots. Our other first quarter sponsor here on TV10 is CMA's Honda of Winchester at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. Johnson makes a second free throw as well. She's got four points. Comes Annie Hunt down the lane. Dumps it off to Bowman. 
who puts up the shot and it's good. Two points for another freshman, Carmea Bowman. Shepard off to a good start. Shooting over 50% compared to Westchester right now, shooting under 30%. Emily McAteer sinks a three with Bowman right in her face. She's the fourth leading scorer in the PSAC for a reason. Seven points already for her. Grant running pick and roll. Pulls up long two. No good. But a rebound fought for between Johnson and Bowman. Possession arrow goes the way of Shepard. Possession arrow. Exactly one minute to go in the quarter. Shepard trailing by four. Rhodes bounce pass into Hunt. Tries a spin. Her shot is swallowed up. Yeah, it looked like she was forcing that one a little. Yeah, she was. Aaron Daly had it from the start. Leah Johnson pull up jumper. No good, but it's another offensive rebound. And they'll say there's a foul along the way as well. Foul on Grant for Shepard. We'll say that one's on Peyton Grant, her first. Fourth foul on Shepard. Next one would put them in the bonus for the quarter. The ball's inbounded to McAteer, and she gets right to the rim for two more. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. Four fouls. Shepard, zero for Westchester. 33 seconds left in the quarter. Cassidy Rhodes at the top of the key. Gets it over to Annie Hunt. Pulls up from three. No good. Bowman can't quite get the rebound. It's Worley who ends up with it. And the Golden Rams can hold for the final shot of the quarter. At 20-14, to 14, they lead by six. Johnson guarded by Carr. She'll get it off to Daly. We'll go inside for McAteer. Six seconds on the clock now. Four. Here comes Johnson into the lane. Drives. Dumps it off to Daly, who scores right before the buzzer. So at the end of one quarter, the Golden Rams are up on the Shepherd Rams, 22 to 14. We'll take a one-minute break and be back for the second quarter of Shepherd basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Kick off the new year in a new Chevy from CMA's Chevrolet of Martinsburg. We've got a great selection of new Chevy models on our lot. Right now, save up to $9,000 off MSRP on a new 2024 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab. Or check out a new 2024 Equinox and save up to $3,500 off MSRP. And did we mention every new car comes with Chevy Complete Care and our lifetime powertrain warranty? Find new roads at CMA Chevrolet of Martinsburg.com, where owners just care more. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. You had one job. It's twin girls. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. One quarter down, three to go here in the women's game. Between the Shepherd Rams and the Westchester Golden Rams, it's a 22-14 lead for Westchester. And Westchester starts quarter number two with the ball. Your Westchester closed out that first quarter strong. To extend that lead out to six. Uh, it's another offensive rebound on this possession for Westchester, and it's Anna McTamney. Putting up two more. She's got seven points. Great scoring so far for her. Jordan Carr on the other end. Puts up a jumper no good. Kara Miner got the rebound but couldn't put back in the second chance points. So here comes Westchester the other way. Johnson. Ball ends up with to McAteer's hands. Top of the key. No good. But Daly gets the rebound over Rhodes and puts in two points to make it a 12-point lead, 26-14. Shepard struggling with the size of Westchester, giving them lots of second-chance opportunities. Grant on the other end 
Her floater is way too strong off the backboard. And they'll have a loose ball foul called on this end. Looks like it is against Brianna Seltzer. That's the first foul of the night against Westchester. 8.56 left in the second quarter. Bowles looking for someone to find the inbounds to. Gets the car. She tries to work against Seltzer. Drives in. And they'll call another foul on Seltzer. Two quick ones. She picks up. She comes in off the bench. Again, we'll see if she takes a seat on the bench as a result. It looks like they're going to keep her out there. Rhodes gets it into Bowles. She finds Carr, who gets in. Her floater is good. First two points of the night for Jordan Carr. Cuts the lead to 10. Yep, and that stops the Westchester 11-0 run as well. Here comes Johnson, looking for space, pump fake, pull is up, and that's good. Six points for Leah Johnson. That means she just needs four to become the school's all-time leading scorer. Imagine we'll get a stoppage in play if that happens, or a timeout from Westchester. If not, Bowles gets rid of the ball as she lost control and was double teamed. Nearly trapped. Here comes Carr in the lane. Her shot is sent back by McAteer. She just barely saves it from going out of bounds. But in the process, she throws it out of bounds. So Shepard ends up with the ball again. 8.02 left in the quarter. Our second quarter on TV 10 brought to you in part by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg and Orsini's.com. Jordan Carr working on the left wing. Finds a wide open Peyton Grant. A blown assignment off the screen. Peyton Grant's got five points. Make it a ten point lead again for Westchester. And that was good vision there for the assist. Just got to get some stops on the other end and some rebounds. McAteer top of the key again. Three-pointer over Grant. No good. Long rebound out to Bowles. They try to get it going. Long three in response Ooh. by Grant. And she sinks it. I did not expect her to pull up from there. She'll pull up from way downtown. The sophomore out of Plymouth, Maine, has range that feels like it goes all the way out to her hometown. McTamney drives in the lane, loses control of it, goes right into the hands of Jordan Carr. Shepard's on a 3-2 to two break, but here comes McTamney the other way, even in the odds, and getting the turnover back to her side. Johnson thought maybe she traveled there. No call. Tamney channeling in her, her inner Bobby Knight as well as she sent a chair flying across the floor. Daly will work it top of the key and back to McTamney. And now a double team off the screen leaves Daly wide open and she nails the three to put Westchester back up by 10. Minor to Rhodes. Now end up with Jordan Carr, right wing, pick and roll. She pulls up, does Carr, no good. Six minutes left until halftime. Johnson gets the rim and draws the foul. I believe that'll be called on Kara Minor. And it will be, that's her second. Yeah, Bowles, I think, made contact with the ball, but Miner made contact with the body when both were going up there trying to block. So Miner will sit down. Annie Hunt will check in. And Bowles will also sit down. That will be Carmea Bowman that checks back in for her. Johnson misses the first. Johnson typically a good free throw shooter.
And she's able to make the second, though. She's up to seven points. The car will work it the other way. Annie Hunt has it, picks up her dribble, looking for Rhodes, who pulls up with a long three-pointer. No good, but Bowman gets the rebound, turns around and puts it in with the left hand for two points. Bowman has four, making a nine-point deficit. Worley works it outside. They'll go back to Johnson, guarded by Carr. Johnson drives in. Wild shot is no good, but they'll get a loose ball foul on the rebound. Good job by Johnson to go in to see the space. Originally, it was just a screen so she could try to get some space put up for three since she's three away from the program record now for Westchester, but still gets the uh, foul and keeps possession. She'll inbound it, get it right back. Working against Carr again. Coming off the screen is Seltzer. Pulls up, three-pointer is good. Seltzer. Westchester shooting the lights out from downtown, it feels like. Yeah, I believe now four three-pointers made. Shepard hasn't found quite the same success as Bowman turns it over. Here comes the Golden Rams on the fast break. Seltzer too far under the basket for that shot. But McTamney was able to get it back. Johnson pull it out. Take her time. 12 on the shot clock. Catches Carr sleeping a little bit. Able to pull up from mid-range for the jumper. Put the Golden Rams back up by 14. Yep, now Johnson one point away. She has tied the program record now at 1,624 points. Hunt tried to get it into Bowman on the pick and roll. It was no good. Here we go, four minutes until halftime. Worley has the ball. They'll get it over to Johnson. She drives inside. Carr puts up the jumper, gets the bounce. No, no, she doesn't. Bounced off the rim about three times. I can see a little wry smile on a couple of players' faces yeah, in even between Johnson. The men's team waiting for that one to they fall. Knew, they know exactly how many points she's at and how many she needs. And we'll get a timeout. Taken by Shepard. We'll take the time out with them for 30 seconds. This is Shepard Basketball on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Kick off the new year in a new Chevy from CMA's Chevrolet of Martinsburg. We've got a great selection of new Chevy models on our lot. Right now, save up to $9,000 off MSRP on a new 2024 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab. Or check out a new 2024 Equinox and save up to $3,500 off MSRP. And did we mention every new car comes with Chevy Complete Care and our lifetime powertrain warranty? Find new roads at CMA Chevrolet of Martinsburg.com, where owners just care more. Three Westchester leads Shepard here at the Butcher Center in Shepherdstown. Shepard calling a timeout and Colin, it just seems like too much size and outside shooting from Westchester so far for the Rams to handle. Yeah, uh, Westchester right now four and nine from beyond the arc. Shepard three for seven, so not too bad there, but 14 of 33 from the floor for Westchester, 10 of 21 for Shepard. But as I mentioned earlier, you just got to get rebounds, and that's still the glaring difference to me. 20 rebounds in total for Westchester so far to only nine for Shepard. Our other second quarter sponsor is Craig Blair for State Senate. Eastern Panhandle's first and only Senate President, Lieutenant Governor, a fiscal and social conservative who's making West Virginia great again by cutting taxes and creating jobs. Re-elect Craig Blair in 2024. Inbound out of the timeout for Shepard. They try to get it into Bowman against Worley. She's able to get it eventually, but not with the position she wanted. She dumps it off the Bowles, though. And Sydney Bowles is able to put it in for two. Good little head fake there by Bowles to get the defender to jump up. 
Bowles' first points of the night. On the other end, Worley not able to put that one in. And Westchester gets the turnover, too. And we'll get a whistle here. And not sure what the uh, whistle is. Something maybe with clock management over at the scores table. 2.54 until halftime. 24 seconds on the shot clock. They'll work at this ball around. They'll get it to Johnson. Step back mid-range jumper. She sinks it. With that basket, Leah Johnson has become the all-time leading scorer in Westchester women's basketball. 16-26. As she gets herself to 11 points on the night. Aaron Daly getting the block and then frustration foul there for Bowman afterwards. But get a timeout here now for Westchester so they can honor Leah Johnson. Congratulations to her. And we'll keep it here. So congratulations to Leah Johnson. Came into Westchester in 2019 as a freshman. Now in her COVID year, fifth year. And now is the all-time leading scorer in Westchester Golden Rams women's basketball history. 2.23 until halftime. It's 39-25 to 25 Westchester. So we'll see if Westchester's demeanor changes now that they've gotten that record for their senior leader out of the way. They'll dump the ball off to Johnson. Her shot is blocked. She able to get it back, though, keep it in possession of Westchester. And it looks like Worley stepped on the out-of-bounds line as she tried to dribble. Two minutes remaining in the half, two minutes. Jordan Carr will bring it back up for the Rams. Kara Werner back in the game after some foul trouble. Bowles will work it in the mid-range, tries to get it over McTamney. And they'll say on the jump shot that she was fouled. Yeah, McTamney uh, on the follow-through made contact with Bowles hand, so good call there. Three team fouls for each side in the second quarter. Sydney Bowles, two points on the night so far. A 5'9 junior from Elkview, West Virginia. Puts in the first shot. And will miss the second. Bowman almost comes down with a rebound. Ooh. Ball falls on the floor. Last okay. goes out off the foot of Westchester. Ball don't lie. I, I thought initially when uh, Mac is here trying to save it from going out of bounds, I saw her foot slightly out of bounds, but referee uh, didn't. Kara Werner's guarded by Johnson. It's the roll, the pick and roll. Gets it inside mid-range. One-footed floaters, no good. Here comes Johnson the other way. On the fast break, puts up the shot. It rolls around, no good. Rebounded by Werner. She'll dump it off the bowls. Thinks about the long two. Holds off, though. Now Bowman with a long two of her own. It goes short, rebounded by Westchester. Minute left before halftime. And Seltzer will slow things down so they can run their offense. McAteer has the ball. Ball poked away a little bit by Bowman, but sticks with the Rams, the Golden Rams. And they'll 
Double team the ball. They leave McAteer wide open from three. You can't do that. She's got 12 points, 42-26. Here comes Warner on the other end. Pulls up long two. She's got it. Werner cuts the lead to 14. She's up to nine points. Can only assume that she would have she would have more than that. If she played her normal minutes. Drew two fouls in the first quarter. McAteer, two seconds, one second. They'll get a whistle with one second. And they'll, they'll call a foul on the floor with .8 seconds left. So Westchester has time for a catch, maybe one dribble and then a shot. So they'll say that's the second foul on Carmea Bowman. And McAteer hits it at the buzzer. A buzzer beater in both quarters for Westchester. She's got 14 now. McAteer with 14 points at halftime. It's 44 to 28. Let's take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll have the Mansion Freddy Law Firm Halftime Show. Shepherd Basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At the Berkeley County Health Department, our motto is prevent, promote, protect. Since 1935, our mission has been to provide clinical and environmental services to protect the health of the general public. We're committed to building public health in our community by offering a wide range of services, including blood pressure screening, breast and cervical screening, family planning, counseling, lab testing, and more. We perform health inspections to make sure the restaurants you visit are clean, and we prepare and coordinate plans to respond to all hazards. The Berkeley County Health Department, 122 Waverly Court, Martinsburg. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Welcome into the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm Halftime Show here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As you see, Shepard representing all of, and they're representing and honoring all of their women's athletic teams here on National Girls and Women's and in Sports Day. Thank you again, ladies. Cheerleaders, softball, cross country, volleyball, lacrosse. And of course, at halftime of the women's basketball game, where it's 45 to 28, Westchester over Shepherd. Get you our first half stats. Brought to you by the Berkeley County Health Department, Prevent, Promote, Protect, offering public, clinical, and environmental services at 122 Waverly Court in Martinsburg. It's a big half for Westchester. Leah Johnson leads the way. I think the stats are a little off here. Emily McAteer leads the way with 14 points. Leah Johnson with 11 points. Anna McTamney has 7 points. 
Aaron Daly has seven points of her own. Michelle Kosicki has two, and Brianna Seltzer has a three-pointer of her own. Kara Werner, nine points, leads the way for Shepard. Peyton Grant has eight. Carmea Bowman has two. City Bowles has three. Jordan Carr and Kara Miner have each gotten themselves two points each. Shepard shooting a little better from the field, 46% to 44 for Westchester. Westchester doing a lot better from three-point range, 6 of 11 for 54%. Shepard only 3 of 7, just under 43%. Westchester gotten more free throws, gotten more rebounds. Offensive rebounds, 12 to 5 for Westchester over Shepard, 22 to 13 in rebounds overall. Colin, your thoughts on that first half? Um... Right now I'm just trying to figure out which one's correct, the scoreboard here at the Butcher Center or the stance online because uh, online says it's 45-28. Scoreboard says 44-28. Point difference, I don't know. But first half thoughts, I mean, first quarter, even though they're in the end of the quarter, Westchester pulled away. I I was overall happy with how Shepard started. It's just now that the experience and... Westchester skill just has taken over and been the difference maker. We expected them to have a big lead here at halftime and for that to continue to climb. So hopefully, though, more rebounds for Shepard. I have, though, liked that they've limited the turnovers so far. Have the uh, Rams, I believe, only so far. Looks like here seven turnovers. The Westchester with four. So hopefully uh, Shepard can continue to limit the turnovers here, and that hopefully helps them keep it closer than last time. We'll say my my notes that I've been taking down by hand here, counting points myself, I do have Westchester at 44, just like the scoreboard does. So with that, let's take a two-minute break. We're about nine minutes away from the start of half number two here from the Butcher Center. And we get confirmation it's 44. There you go. Thank you to the uh, to the uh, sports information department there at Shepard for giving us their s- stats at halftime. But we'll take a two-minute break and send it back to Nick Verzellini for a halftime scoreboard show. This is Shepard Basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount, six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas reward, six cents off a gallon. You had one job. It's twin girls. Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rocks Rewards. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC.
We welcome you in here to the halftime scoreboard update. I'm Nick Verzellini here at the half. Your score, it is Westchester 44, Shepard 28 here at the half. We'll give you some other scores from around the EPAC and then send it back to Dylan and Colin for the start <laughs> of the second half. But I'm sorry, in the PSAC, EPAC, PSAC. Shepard tied with Millersville 27 27. Cuts down Lockhaven. It's KU 31, Lockhaven 26. Edinburgh leads Gannett 26 24. IUP over uh, Mercyhurst 24 18. Pitt Johnstown trailing Clarion 33 31. And Cal leads Seton Hill 27 23. Not a whole lot else going on in college women's basketball at this time because most games will tip off later in Division One. But those are our scores here in the PSAC. And again, your score here at the half, it is Westchester 44, Shepard 28. We'll take another two-minute break. On the other side of that break, Dylan and Colin will get you set, start, set, I should say, for the start of the second half. This is West Virginia High School. Now, this is, gosh, my bad. This is NCAA Division II College Basketball on TV10. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States each year. But do you know the radon levels in your home? Home is a place to live, love, and laugh, not a place to breathe air containing radon. The Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments are distributing free confidential radon test kits, and you can get yours at the Berkeley County Health Department office in Martinsburg and the Morgan County Health Department office in Berkeley Springs. Protect your home and family. Get your free radon test kit today. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Finally, West Virginia is moving in the right direction. As your West Virginia Senate President, Craig Blair has passed the most conservative legislative agenda in the nation. He has fought for our values like banning elective abortions, protecting our Second Amendment rights, and prevented boys from playing in girls' sports. Senator Craig Blair championed the largest tax cut in the history of our state. Craig Blair, a strong conservative leader, promises made, promises kept. This election, vote for Republican Craig Blair for State Senate. Pay for by the committee to re-elect Craig Blair. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? 
Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Oh, he tried calling me. What? Welcome back inside the Butcher Center. Getting ready for the second half. Here between Westchester and Shepard. Current score of 44 to 28. The Golden Rams leading the Shepard Rams. In a big half for the big time scorers of Westchester. Emily McAteer averaging 17 and a half points per game so far this year, which is good for fourth in the EPAC. Has 14 so far here tonight. Leah Johnson had 11 in that first half with the first with her last basket being good enough to get her the school's all-time record four points. 1626. Aaron Daly adding in seven. Anna McTamney with seven. Those are the big time scorers leading the way for Westchester. Although Michelle Kosicki, third leading scorer on the year so far for Westchester at 10.8. Only two points so far, but they've had slack picked up elsewhere. Now here comes Shepard. They'll have the ball. Start the third quarter. Trying to cut into this lead. Kara Werner will pull up from mid-range. And she'll start the second half like she was most of the first half. Starts off hot. Yeah, I like up that. Up to 11. Set piece to start off coming out. Now you get a steal. And Bowman take it the other way. Eventually get it to Werner. Now they'll set things up. Miner gets it into Werner inside, working against McTamney. Finally gets it to Bowman. Worley overextended trying to steal that entry pass. Couldn't get there. Bowman with an easy two points to get herself up to six on the night. Forty-four thirty-two. Here comes McIntyre driving inside. And they'll call the charge. Or excuse me, that's Kosicki, number 10. Not McAteer, number 20. And we'll get a very early timeout taken by Westchester. We'll take a 30 second break with them. This is Shepherd Basketball here on TV 10, WRNR TV on YouTube. Radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer deaths in the United States each year. But do you know the radon levels in your home? Home is a place to live, love, and laugh, not a place to breathe air containing radon. The Berkeley and Morgan County Health Departments are distributing free confidential radon test kits, and you can get yours at the Berkeley County Health Department office in Martinsburg and the Morgan County Health Department office in Berkeley Springs. Protect your home and family. Get your free radon test kit today. into the third quarter. Westchester calls a timeout following a 6-0 run to open things up here in the second half for Shepard. Yeah, great start for uh, the Shepard Rams here, causing a charge, a steal as well. and Excuse me, 4-0 run. Right. I was going to let you figure it out. I didn't want to correct you immediately <laughs> off the bat, but my spidey senses were tingling. Something fell I down. knew you had it in you. I won seventh grade math field day. Or for you're a just reason, predicting right? the future here. Maybe you're <laughs> seeing a two pointer here from Shepard. Yes, uh, yeah, they're, they're just seeing into the future for the 6 0 run, right? Yeah. Here we go. Bowman hands it off to Werner. Three pointer goes about halfway down and out. It had to. It was a three. It wouldn't be a 6 0 run then, it'd be a 7 0 run. Mm. That's a fantastic point, Colin. Leah Johnson working the other way. Gets it into McTamney. And 
uh, Miner got the ball away, but then it went out of bounds off of her foot. So it'll stick with Westchester. Hey, another good job on defense here with the deflection. Johnson gets it in to Kosicki. And Kosicki gets her first two points of the half. First two points since very early on in this one. Makes it 46-32. to And Shepard just lost her. Carr gets the pick from Bowman. She'll kick it out to Bowman or to Werner, who tried to get it in the Bowman. And it went off of her hand and out of bounds. Couldn't handle the pass. Bowman was trying to post dump but didn't receive the ball first. Got to get the ball and then try to make your move on the post. Third quarter on TV 10 brought to you in part by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to FordofHagerstown.com. Leah Johnson working. Now go to Kozicki. Westchester working the ball around the perimeter. McAteer, now Worley. It's guarded by Grant. Kozicki's going to pull up from three. Too strong. Bowman ends up with the rebound. Here comes Shepard. Grant hands it off to Werner. Werner's going to try to go inside. Is denied, but she finds a cutting Peyton Grant who puts the shot up and is good. Grant cuts the lead to 12 again. That gets her to double digits. She's up to 10 points. Under seven left in the third here. As Worley pulls up from the free throw line. No good. Bowman with another board. I'd like to start here from Shepard so far in the third, being the aggressors. And there you go, a three now. Kara Miner from downtown gets it back to a single-digit deficit. Yeah, Shepard not giving up. You see that from them for a majority of this year. And we'll see if they can continue to do so here and cut into the lead. Johnson pulls up from the elbow. Too strong. Cold shooting in the third quarter here for Westchester so far. Miner's going to pull up again. Another three. Too much on that one. Just two points here in quarter number three. Four minutes into it. For the Golden Rams of Westchester. 9-2 this third quarter. And Miner hits the deck. Looks like she got hit in the nose, but it sh looks like she's going to be the one called for the foul. Yeah, we had that in a high school game this week. When you get hit in the face, it still baffles me how you're the one that gets called with a foul. I didn't see the contact. It was away from the ball. But I, I agree with you in general, Colin. I think contact with the face tends to be the, the type most often not noticed by officials. I think we just had a warning to Coach Kaufman. Not sure what. Maybe. The Johnson goes to the rim. Count the bucket and the foul. Sydney Bowles called for the foul. So Johnson makes it 48-37. It's only the first foul for Bowles. And Johnson will complete the three-point play, getting herself up to 14 points. Here comes Carr. Tried to get in the bounce pass to a cutting Werner. Bounced it off the leg of a Westchester player. This will be a kick ball. Shepard will inbound from underneath the basket. Throw it out to the three-point line for Grant. 20 on the shot clock. Carr, pick and roll with Bowman. Switch. And on the other end, we'll get a three-point play opportunity. The and one for Jordan Carr. 
cuts the lead down to 10 again. Yeah, beautifully done by the Jefferson product. Yeah, the 5'6 junior from Charlestown. Yeah. Shields with the left, goes up with the right. And she'll sink the free throw to make it 49-40. Huge improvement from the Lady Rams compared to the first time around against Westchester. And it was a 55-point victory for Westchester. Here's another turnover by the Golden Rams. Here comes Carr. And it looks like they'll have to back things out, slow it down a little bit. Bowles, though, driving to the rim. Get a foul. Draws the foul on Aaron Daly. And that'll be the under five minute media timeout. Let's keep it here. Get you our other third quarter sponsor here on TV 10. It's Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call them at 304-263-3361. Like you mentioned, Colin. You know, now we're now we're at three points for Westchester in this half. After adding in a free throw, excuse me, five. They had forty. You're right. Uh, uh, forty-four points at halftime. I'm cheating. You're not. I have That's it in true. front of me on <laughs> my phone. I could. I'm just choosing not to. I suppose. But it's been a great 14-point quarter for Shepard so far. The offense has come alive. Three points for Carr, three points for Miner, two each for Grant, Werner, and Bowman. I believe that adds up to 12. Yeah, you got to be really happy with how, even though it's only been 40 points so far, your team's shooting. If you're Coach Kaufman, you're shooting over 50% right now, 51 and a half, knocked down 17 of the 33 shots. So they're not playing that Poorly, yes, Westchester still has a nine-point lead, but still overall, at least on paper, we talked about it, they're the better team, so you kind of expect them to have the lead. But the fact that you're not backing down, giving up, and defending your home court here as best as you possibly can is something that you're really happy to see. Sydney Bowles knocks down both free throws. Only a seven-point lead for Westchester. McTamney starting off with the possession. We'll go to Seltzer. Now McAteer. Leah Johnson pulls up and knocks down the shot. She's got five of the seven third quarter points for Westchester. Carrying the load in this quarter. Now Westchester trapping in the half court as well as the, the back court. But Sydney Bowles squeezes out of the trap and gets to the rim for two more. 51-44 here with 4.10 left in the third quarter. And it's McAteer, three-pointer was no good. Peyton Grant got the rebound and was bumped by McTamney right afterwards. So that'll be her second foul. Shepard needs to keep attacking the basket and getting those easy buckets down low in the paint. Get to the free throw line some more as well. Only five free throws here tonight. It's four fouls in the quarter for Westchester as well, so Shepard will go into the bonus with their next foul committed by Westchester. All the more reason to attack the basket. Werner gets Johnson up in the air with the pump fake. Now drives inside, kicks it back out to Peyton Grant for three. No good. Bulls tries to chase down the rebound. Can't get there. Leah Johnson does. Here she comes the other way, pushing the pace. Gets by Bulls. Blows the layup. Kind of bobbled the exchange between hands as she went up for the layup. Werner almost pulled up on that three as she navigated the screens. We'll get it inside. Werner against Johnson. 
tried to dribble underneath the baseline and ended up stepping out of bounds, according to the official. She wanted the foul called on Johnson, sort of blocking her way, I believe, or making contact just in general. I think she thinks she got bumped out of bounds. But it'll go the way of Westchester. Under three minutes to go in the third. Westchester trying to find some more offense in this quarter. And McTamney's blocked by Bowles. Shepard keeping the deficit at just seven. Bowles has it dribbling in. Guarded by McTamney. Trying to get it inside. It's stolen by McAteer. McAteer will pull up from the free throw line. Shot was no good. McTamney gets the save just barely. Leah Johnson ends up with it. Almost took a three. But instead, she'll set up offense with 12 on the shot clock. She wants to drive. Gets a double screen. And... It'll be a jump ball as Carr got her hands in on the ball as Johnson went up for a shot. Possession arrow stays with Westchester. Miner will check in for Bowman. If the jet Westchester has to work quickly. They only have four seconds on the shot clock. McAteer out to Johnson. And nope. Yeah, Johnson didn't realize she only had one second to work with. Didn't get the shot off in time. Shepard gets lucky there because she made it too. She sure did. Bowles has it on the elbow. Gets it back to Carr. Now Bowles will try to work against McAteer. Pulls up and around the free throw line. Can't quite get there. Tough defense from Westchester. A minute and a half left in the third quarter. It'll be Worley up top. Now back to Johnson. Westchester trying to find Johnson some room to maneuver. She has it against Carr. Steps through. That's tough to defend. Another two points for Johnson. We'll get a whistle. Yeah, it was just to stop the clock because the ball was nah. rolling away. 105 left in the quarter. Shepard down by nine. Get Warner on the left wing. Calls for a screen from Bowles. She dumps it off to Bowles. Three-pointer. Can't quite make it. Kara Miner almost gets the rebound. Dives for it. Can't quite get there. It'll go back to the Golden Rams. 47.7 left on the game clock. Seltzer goes away from the screen. Has the ball poked away for a second, but got it back and eventually dumps it off to Worley. Who gets her first two points of the night. 55-44. Shepard has the opportunity to take the last shot of the quarter. Carr will drive in. She'll drive in very early. She was blocked. And before the ball could go the other way. And a push. Foul called on Jordan Carr. with 12.5 on the clock. So now Westchester can hold for the final shot. They made a buzzer beater at the end of the first quarter, and they made one at the end of the second quarter. See if they can go three for three. Johnson against Werner, goes inside. Carr po pokes the ball away. Good defensive play for Shepard. As we go into the fourth quarter, it was a nice run. Shepard's cut into the lead a little bit. 
Westchester started to pull back away towards the end of the quarter, making an 11 point lead, 55 44. Let's take a one minute break and be back for the fourth and final quarter. The Shepherd basketball here on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. I do. I do. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. I can't believe you didn't fill up. That's double my rent. Not my car. Bye. Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rock's rewards. We got double the Rock's gas rewards, six cents off a gallon. You had one job. It's twin girls. <laughs> Save now with double the gas discount. Six cents off a gallon with Rocks Rewards. Start of the fourth quarter here from the Butcher Center. Shepard starting the quarter with possession. Kara Werner tries to work the ball inside. Her pass for Bowman's deflected and taken away by Westchester. Dylan Bishop and Colin McLaughlin here for TV10, WRNR TV on YouTube. Final quarter here for the Shepherd women's basketball team against one of the best teams in the PSAC, Westchester. Seltzer driving to the rim. Her shot's no good. Werner working on the right wing, pulls up for three. She knocks it down. Kara Warner is up to 14 points on the night. Shepard trails by just eight. Yeah, this team continues to fight and not back down to Westchester. Westchester in the first two quarters scored 22 points each in the third, only 11, so cutting them in half. McAteer. Gets inside and scores her first two points of the second half. She had 14 to lead both sides in the first half. Warner driving in, kicks it out to Cassidy Rhodes for three. She can't hit it. It's a contested shot. 8-12 left in this game. 10-point deficit for the Rams. McIntyre, top of the key, trying to get it back to Johnson. We'll go over right wing for Seltzer, guarded by Rhodes. And they'll call foul on Cassidy Rhodes on the floor. And Rhodes, like, just like that, will check out. Peyton Grant will check in. Fourth quarter on TV 10. Brought to you in part by Parsons Ford at 1400 Shepherdstown Road and online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. And we'll get a foul before the inbound. Looks like on Kara Miner. Yep. That's her fourth. And Cindy Bowles has to rush off the bench to check in for Bowles, or for Miner. She's one foul away from fouling out with just under eight minutes left. Johnson working against Werner. Has to pick up her dribble. Three-second violation called. Don't see that every day. Three in the key on Westchester. It's a turnover. Yeah. Kaziki, it's called. Tough break for Kaziki, third leading scorer on the team, only has four points tonight, two in each half. Bowles on the elbow, goes to Bowman, who takes a fadeaway jumper. Entire body was fading away on that one. Shot selection has not been great at times for the Rams. Rams. 
Johnson and McAteer run the pick and roll. Johnson pulls up. No good on that shot. Shepard gets the rebound, but we'll get the foul, loose ball foul on McAteer along the way. That's only her first. Seltzer will check out. McTamney will check in. Peyton Grant leading the charge here. And they'll call a carry on Werner. Yeah, they say they, when she made that spin move, kind of held it up while turning. Another shot here for Westchester to extend their lead. Shepard runs out of time to try to continue cutting into it. They'll go inside for Kozicki against Bowman. Good defense from Carmea Bowman as <laughs> Bowles fights and pulls the rebound away from Bowman. 6.20 left in the game. Carr driving inside. Picks up the foul against Kozicki. Two shots at the line for Jordan Carr, who has five points on the night. Carr misses the first. Jim goes quiet for Carr's second free throw. That one is good. Brings it back to a single digit deficit. 57 48. We're now at six minutes left to go. Johnson fires a pass across court to Worley. Quickly puts up the shot and puts it in the basket. Westchester back up by 11. Brianna Seltzer, looks like her last stint on the bench is going to be a quick one. She's getting ready to check back in. And we'll get a foul on the floor. It's only the first foul on Johnson, but it is three fouls for the quarter for Westchester. 542 left to go. And that's your window of opportunity if you're Shepard. Got to get Westchester in foul trouble here, get to the free throw line and knock him down if you want to come back. Bowles drives inside, kicks it to Carr. She puts up a floater, and it's good. Carr with six points in just the second half. Gives her eight for the night. It's a nine-point lead for Westchester once again. Johnson drives, pulls up, knocks it down again. Yeah, Johnson's found her shot back after a slow start in the first quarter. She's gotten back under her own footing and having a great game. 20 points now on the night for Leah Johnson. Ball's inside for Bowman. And a foul is called against Worley. Bowman put the ball on the deck. Picked up the foul as she lost control of it. Under five minute media timeout. Here at the Butcher Center, we'll take the break with them for 30 seconds as Shepherd Basketball here on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. 4.44 left to go 
61 to 50. Westchester currently leads Shepard down the home stretch of this women's basketball game here in the PSAC. Our other fourth quarter sponsor here on TV10 is the Larry DeMarco team of Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the Tri-State, they have you covered. Still a lot of time left if you're Shepard to try to fight and claw your way back into this one and keep it close, maybe even come back and force an overtime or a lead. Still very tough to do that. Need to get some stops on the defensive end. Out of the timeout, get the inbound to Werner. She'll pull up from mid-range. Can't quite get the bounce, but it's rebounded by Miner. She'll go back up, and she'll draw the foul. Drawing it on Worley. And there you go. That's the fifth team foul of the quarter against Westchester, which means Shepard has the double bonus the rest of the way. Yep, it'll be two free throws for every Westchester foul, no matter what, the rest of the way. Miner sinks the first one. She's got four fouls of her own. Just recently checking back in there. And she'll make the second one, too. Back to just a nine-point game. Yep, you just got to keep getting to the free throw line. Shepard, seven to nine from there so far. Johnson kicks it out to Seltzer, three in the corner. Air balls it too strong. And the pass attempt from her knees by McAteer is out of bounds. It goes to Shepard. Carr will bring it up. Shepard needs to go on a hot streak on the offensive end. Werner pulls up. Maybe that's the start of it. Kara Werner. Up to 16 points. Shepard trails by seven. Tried to get the ball inside to Seltzer. She wasn't ready for it. Stolen by Shepard. Here comes Werner the other way. She pulls up free throw line, and it's good. The leads cut the five with three and a half minutes to go. Westchester wants another timeout. 61-56. Warner's at 18 now, right? That's right. I believe this is her career high. Yes, it was. Yes, it is. Her career high coming into this one was on January 3rd Your this birthday. year. She, my birthday, her career high. It was 16 points against IUP. This is her freshman season, so now she's set herself a new season high and career high. There you go, and as you said, five-point ball game here against Westchester, the second-best team in the uh, East here in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. So loving Shepard's fight here in this second half. Westchester. Inb inbound to McTamney. She tries to drive inside. She gets the bucket and the foul. Going strong to the hoop. Anna McTamney, that's her first points of the second half. After she had seven in the first half. She went to the rim with a purpose. Drew the, draw the foul on Sydney Bowles. To put Westchester back up by seven. And her free throw is short. Nearly popped out of the hands of Carr as Bowles bumped into her, but sticks with Shepard. So seven-point deficit again, 3-12 left to go. They'll double Werner off the screen. She tries to pass it, and it goes into the hands of McAteer. And leaking out on the fast break was Johnson for two more points for the Golden Ram. Suddenly, Westchester's back up by nine. Yeah, this moment here after the timeout hurts. Werner off the screen is Grant. Her three-pointer is good. 
Grant cuts the lead back to six. Two and a half minutes to go. We'll go back to McTamney. She'll drive in. She's cut off. Well, she'll start to work around the other way. McAteer puts one up too strong. And wow. Werner was hit Thank in the you. back of the head by Worley. It looked like the official right in front of the play was going to miss the call. And the <laughs> official from Thank the you. other side had to be the one to call it. I was thinking the same thing. The one from the front didn't see the foul. But you did say the foul was a hit in the back of the head. So maybe that's why the official right in front of it didn't see it. I suppose from that angle it, it would be more possible to, to, miss, to miss that. But, you know, when, when Werner goes to the deck holding the back of her head, probably saying something along the lines of, ow, then I think the official from the, from the other side there was kind of forced into calling that one. It doesn't affect her first free throw, though. Werner hits that one, gets herself up to 19 points on the night, cuts the lead to five. 2.18 left to go. Second free throw, no good. Ah. So the lead will stay at five. That's as close as Shepard's gotten it. 2.08 left. Johnson drives, shoots, too short. Rushed it, perhaps. Werner, working fast, gets it to Miner, almost pulled up from three. Thought better of it. 1.53 to go. Car guarded by McAteer. She'll try to drive inside, gets past, and draws the foul. There you go, back to the free throw line. 148 left to go. Jordan Carr can cut this to a one possession lead for Westchester. First free throw, ooh, rims out. Shepard struggled from the free throw line just a little bit here tonight. Just enough to keep the lead with the Golden Rams. Carr makes the second, though. Now just a four-point lead. Shepard has missed exactly four free throws so far. Yep, but you still got a minute 40 left. Don't need to foul just yet and play that game. Johnson over to McTamney, pump fake, pulls up from two, and it's good. Anna McTamney makes it a six-point lead again. Now if you miss here, you probably need to start playing the foul game. You might. Get to Grant, trying to find room for her to maneuver. Back to Werner, and they'll get another foul called on Westchester. Yeah, trying to see who that is. I think it's... uh. Worley kind of tried to just pull her yep. way or push her way through the screen and gets called with that foul. That'll be Worley's fourth. And I believe she's picked up all four of those in the second half. If not, then, then three of them. Sydney Bowles is the one that goes to the line, and she misses the free throw, the first of two. Make that the fifth missed free throw of the night for Shepard. Second attempt. That one falls. Bowles is up to eight points. 1-11 left to go. Johnson guarded closely by Carr. They get it out of her hands and fouls called against Peyton Grant. She guarded a Worley. That was Shepard's last foul to give. Third foul on Peyton Grant, so next foul against Shepard will lead to free throws for Westchester. And Carr very quickly called for that one. By the look on her face, I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, I think she was trying to kind of more tramp Johnson. That's not the player you want to send to the free throw line if you're Shepard. No, and it, it seemed like a good call. I think Carr was just getting a little too aggressive, reaching around a little too much. Carr 
Johnson makes the first, makes the second. Looks like Kaufman calling a timeout for Shepard. Now we'll get him one more break here for 30 seconds during the timeout. This is Shepard basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. 69-62 with 59.7 seconds left. Shepard needs a few really good things to go their way here in this last minute. Kara Werner, tough three off the inbound. No good. And it'll be a loose ball foul called against Jordan Carr on the rebound attempt. And it'll be free throws for Westchester. Overall, even though it looks like it's going to be a loss for Shepard, I still think you have to be satisfied with your performance. First half wasn't the best. You had a big deficit at halftime. But you came out in the second half, didn't give up, kept it close here. And I think there's still some stuff that you can build off of for the rest of the season. No, I'm with you, Colin. This Westchester team is 11-4 and four on the season. 16 and 5 overall. They have the number two scoring offense and scoring defense in the PSAC. This is a game that when Shepard went to Westchester not very long ago, it was January 10th, Shepard lost by 55 points. This is a much needed improvement upon that game. You've won the second half so far. Absolutely. Down by 16 at halftime as McTamney makes the first free throw. Now you're just down by eight. Going on nine if McTamney makes this free throw, and she does. Another timeout called by Shepard. Yep, there's another timeout. We can keep it here, though, through this timeout. Foul trouble wise, both teams in pretty good positions as this one has played out. Worley with four fouls for Westchester, Minor with four fouls for Shepard. Peyton Grant's picked up three. No players have picked up three for Westchester. So outside of that, pretty good. You've gotten three fouls against Jordan Carr. So if you need to play the foul game a little more going forward, you have some room to, to do it with. Werner has it. They'll go to Peyton Grant. Takes the long three-pointer, and it hits the corner of the rim. That one's no good. And Werner will go and foul Johnson on the other side. So Leah Johnson will get a chance to add in two more points to her total for the night. Incredibly impressive night for her. As the first half, she set the school record for most points in a career. She sinks the first free throw. And then has put in a blistering, make it now 15 points, second half to give herself 26 on the night. And Werner will draw a foul on the other, on the other end. So 39.2 seconds left. Shepard will get two more free throws. Which will give Werner the opportunity to extend her career high, potentially hitting 20 points for the first time in her college career if she makes at least one free throw here. And she makes the first, so give her 20. Nine points in the first half. A first half where she sat a good bit of the first quarter with foul trouble. 
And now 12 points in the second half to give her 21. Carr will foul Brianna Seltzer. So with 35.6 seconds left, 73 to 64, Westchester has a chance to go back up by double digits. Yeah, but still can't quit here late. Even though the discipline showing very well so far for Westchester from the free throw line as Seltzer makes the first. So I believe they're now 11 to 13, make it 12 of 14 from the free throw line as she made both. Make it 75-64 with 35.6 seconds left. Another timeout taken by Julie Kaufman. Can't take them home with you, so she'll use them. We'll take one more 30-second break here. This is Shepherd Basketball here on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even the pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. Desperation mode. And Leah Johnson reached in as Peyton Grant went up for the layup. I'll say it was before the shot, wow. though, so the shot doesn't count. So just two free throws and no basket for Peyton Grant, who has had an impressive night so far. Make it now 14 points for Peyton Grant. And now 15 on the night to cut the lead back to just nine. And Shepard will continue to foul. Westchester has not been missing free throws. Now they're 14 to 16 from the free throw line now. They have not been missing the free throws that they need them to miss to get back into this one. I believe maybe both of those missed free throws were in the first three quarters of the game. As now Emily McAteer will knock down the first. McAteer with the leading scorer in the first half with 14 points. Been quiet so far in the second half. Those two free throws mark just her third and fourth points of the half. She's up to 18. Warner trying to fight against Johnson. And they'll say she stepped out of bounds. And that's the second time she's done that. And now Shepard will finally back off. Johnson gets it across half court. And our final score, as the buzzer will sound, is 77-66. Westchester Golden Rams over the Shepard Rams here in PSAC Women's Basketball. Colin, this was a lot better than the first time around, obviously. And then a lot better sec a lot better second half than first half for the Lady Rams. Yeah, you won the second half, didn't win the game, unfortunately, but the fact that you didn't give up, continue to fight, shows that this team has some promise still in the long run and for the what seems to me like a very bright future for this Shepherd women's basketball team program congrats on a great night for Westchester as well getting the win as well as Leah Johnson most importantly breaking the all-time scoring record as she's now the true Golden Ram she really is she really is so let's get right into our post-game show here 
postgame show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. And our postgame stats here brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. And go to FordofHagerstown.com. Starting with the Westchester Golden Rams. It was 26 points on the night for Leah Johnson. Senior point guard was just lights out, especially in that second half. Emily McAteer, this year's leading scorer for Westchester, ends up with 18 points. Anna McTamney throws in 13 of her own. Four points each from Morgan Worley and Michelle Kozicki, and five points off the bench for Brianna Seltzer, and seven off the bench all in the first half for Aaron Daly. On the Shepherd side of things, leading scorer was Kara Werner with her career high of 21. Peyton Grant, 15 points for herself. Nine points for Jordan Carr. Eight points for Sydney Bowles. Seven for Kara Miner. And six points for Carmea Bowman. And if Colin, if you're ready, we can go right into our awards for this game. Sure. <laughs> I'm just ultimately trying to remember a uh, rejection of the game. So that's the only one that I'm not 100% positive as a defying award to give out. Well, well, I'll help you out as we jump into it, as it's brought the rejection of the game is brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. I think we had a couple different ones. There were a couple. I'm trying to... I have one in my mind. I just can't remember who it was. I believe it was somebody for Shepard third quarter here on this end, down low, getting a block there on the uh, left post, but I can't remember who it was. But that's my rejection of the game. Yeah, I, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. I think it was uh, that when they were Westchester was driving inside on the left side. I believe the player you're looking for is Kara Miner. Might have been. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll give it to her. <laughs> Somebody can correct us if I'm wrong. I, I remember the play you're talking about. I do believe it was rejected by Kara Miner. I just said it with a bit of a question mark because you never know. Yeah. You never know. We could be giving credit to Kara for thing for something she didn't do. But I promise I'll go two for three. I'm, you know, I'm sure there's things that Kara d- did do that we didn't give her credit for. So Two or three would put me in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Exactly. So with that, let's go into the moment of the game. Brought to you by WVU Medicine, Berkeley Medical Center, and Jefferson Medical Center, leading healthcare here and everywhere. Moment of the game there once Shepard made it a five point game in the fourth. Westchester called the timeout, came out of that timeout, quickly scored four points to go back up by nine. That's my moment of the game because it really was the final dagger I felt like that Westchester needed to come out on top. And this one's pretty obvious. I think, but the player yes. of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just a supply store any longer, at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg and Orsini's.com. Got to give an honorable mention still to Kara Warner for Shepard here because she did have her career high in points, but player of the game has to still be Westchester's Leah Johnson leading scorer, breaking the program all-time scoring record, so definitely deserving of it. And congratulations to her and Westchester. And with that, we'll take just a short break here, maybe about five minutes or so, give or take. And after that, we'll kind of switch around roles here, and Colin will lead the charge here for the men's game coming up soon here between Westchester and Shepard. And we'll be ready for that one for sure. So... Nick back at the studio will give us a break. Here we'll be back with more Shepherd basketball here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This concludes today's coverage of NCAA Division II basketball featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Our coverage was brought to us thanks to 
Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Rocks, the Dutch Miller Auto Group, the Mirius Group of Financial Advisors, the Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Brown's Funeral Homes and Cremations, CMA Honda, Craig Blair for State Senate, Orsini's Home Store, the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm, the Berkeley County Health Department, Hagerstown Ford, Smallwood and Small Insurance, Modern Realty Results, The Palace Lounge, Cody's Auto Body, WVU Medicine. This has been a WRNR and TV 10 broadcast. All rights reserved. The Palace Lounge.